Hello, thank you for joining us today for our webinar on metering without a hitch, metering as a service redefined. I'm Billy Emus, Sales Associate with AWWA, and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. Before we hear from our speakers, I need to inform you that the mention of specific products or services in this webinar does not represent AWWA endorsement. AWWA does not endorse or approve products or services. I'm pleased to introduce our distinguished panel of experts for today's program. Maurice Blackwell, Senior Solution Architect at Badger Meter. Jackie Bowman, Chief Engineer at the City of Gonzales, Louisiana. And Joey Mitchell, Vice President at UMS. The panelists will share how they are leveraging metering as a service to expedite end-to-end -end enhanced metering deployments and to remove capital costs. The session will detail how the managed service makes upgrading to AMI attainable to all utilities and how the deployment is approached from the meter to the communications network to the data collection process. Our panel will be happy to answer your questions. Feel free to submit questions anytime throughout this broadcast by using the question pane at the lower right hand of your screen. Please include your name and the name of the panelist to whom your question should be directed. Let's begin. First up is Maurice Blackwell, Senior Solution Architect at Badger Meter. Maurice will be covering how metering as a service drives accurate data integration and meter installation. Take it away, Maurice. Billy, thank you very much. It is a pleasure to be with you all this afternoon to talk about this very exciting topic, metering as a service. Metering as a service is relatively new to the water utility industry. Badger Meter has teamed up with UMS to provide this new service to our water utility customers for two primary reasons. One, metering as a service will significantly expedite the deployment of AMI for your water utility while allowing you to more quickly take advantage of all the benefits of AMI. Secondly, it really simplifies this and streamlines the upgrade and integration process for your water utility as well. And we're gonna talk about some of those details here today. Let's talk about meter reading technology and some of the industry trends. I've seen a significant swing towards AMI versus AMR for mid to large utilities over the past five or six years or so. However, as of late, I've also seen many smaller water utilities consider AMI due to what it offers to them. Now, both, both AMI and AMI both provide accurate metering data so that you can deliver an accurate bill to your customer. However, because of the 15 minute interval data that's provided by AMI, you can significantly improve all of your customer service related business processes. You're able to greatly reduce the number of customer service related truck rolls. When it comes to your water loss and conservation, whether it's monitoring your district metered areas or improving the tracking of your conservation programs, AMI can definitely contribute to helping you identify your non-revenue water. And lastly, the power of data analytics and ROI. The most powerful aspect offered by a fixed network versus a mobile meter reading system is the proactive analytics provided by this powerful decision-making 15-minute interval data. When I mention ROI, most people think I'm talking about return on investment. And of course, there is a return on your investment. But what I'm really talking about here is return on intelligence. The intelligence provided by the interval data can bring an added level to, of efficiency to the overall management of your water system. Just remember, data is power. The trends in our industry back up that statement I made earlier about the shift towards AMI versus AMR. There are reports that predict approximately 400 million smart meters being implemented over the next five to six years. Now that equates to about a $10 billion investment for water utilities across the country. And lastly, metering as a service is really becoming a viable option to support water utilities looking to make that next level of technology move. What is metering as a service? Think of metering as a service as a type of delivery model. For example, think about cloud computing. 15 years ago, every business had a server room somewhere in the building, 
where all the company's data was stored and they had a whole team of IT people there to maintain and manage and keep those servers up and running. Today's IT departments look very different. With cloud computing, these companies are now paying a monthly fee to cloud providers like Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure to maintain and keep their data secure on non-company owned servers instead of struggling to do it themselves. The reason that companies value Amazon and Microsoft is that they are dedicated and highly specialized to provide these types of services, taking the burden off of their company's IT departments. In the industry, these services are called platform as a service or software as a service. Metering as a service is very similar. You now have someone who specialized in providing these complete end-to-end -end services for water utilities. Metering as a service from UMS provides utilities with the equipment, the meters, the AMI endpoints, the system integration, installation services, post-installation support, and the financing to upgrade your antiquated systems to AMI. Metering as a service takes you through the four phases of every well-designed project. Having been personally involved with many deployments over my career, I've seen a lot of things go right and a lot of things go wrong. <laughs> service providers who get it right don't do it by accident. They've developed field-proven processes that validate each step along the way. And really, this metering as a service program has meticulously mapped out what's needed from an end-to-end -end perspective to ensure accurate billing each and every month. Utilizing their years of experience, UMS provides the necessary upfront project planning to put together the right plan of action for your unique deployment. One of the aspects that utilities don't focus on and sometimes becomes a stumbling block for their project is the integration integrating that information back into your billing system. UMS works with you to properly integrate that data from your mass meter changeout, as well as your normal monthly meter reads back into your CIS system. UMS provides complete project management and installation services while also working with you to develop a customized public awareness campaign. Now, I've been a part of a couple of these and I love what they do on these public awareness campaigns. It really does four things for your, you and your customers. One, it makes your customer aware of the benefits of the program. Next, it tells them how the system is going to be rolled out. It keeps them up to date on the progress of the deployment and then it also lets them know when it's going to affect them personally. And lastly, under the meeting as a service contract, UMS there is there to maintain your investment for the life of the system. One of the truly fantastic benefits of their maintenance program is the annual testing of all of your three inch and larger meters. Now this point is essential. Having accurate information coming from your meters allows you to truly find the levels of efficiency that you're trying to find. Now let's talk about the good, the bad, and the sometimes ugly. One of the things that Badger Meter really likes about the metering as a service program from UMS is that it significantly expedites the deployment process, it removes a lot of the complexity for the water utility, and it also eases the utility's capital budget. Allow me to share just a few stories with you of customers of mine that have elected to choose metering as a service as their approach to AMI. One of my customers was a small municipal utility here in the Midwest that had been doing a, a slow transition to technology over the past 15 years. They had implemented some touch technology, some drive-by over the last five to six years. Their technology change-out program was more of a fill-in job for their meter readers when they weren't out reading. They even had some areas of their system where they still had manual read meters, and these meters were 20 to 30 years old. When the new water and superintendent was hired, after she reviewed the current situation, she realized that she really needed to do something. The problem was that the town had not budgeted for this as a capital improvement program. One of her areas of expertise coming from her prior utility was meter testing. Well, that was one of the first things that she did is actually take an audit of the meters that they have in place. 
And from this initial audit, she quickly found that, you know what, if we were to change the meters out, we could have an increase of about 7 to 10% of our revenue. She presented her plan to her board, showed them how the metering as a service program works, and then deploying cellular AMI technology along with ultrasonic meters, she was able to get that project approved. Once the project was approved, it was installed in a period of about nine months. And the interesting thing about this deployment was once it was in for about six months, she actually saw an increase of 21% in her overall revenue increase. So it was a it was a, a, one of those great projects that at the end of the day, she really, her board was very happy that they went that way. Another utility that decided to go towards meetings or service was a, a mid-sized utility on the East Coast. They were planning an AMI upgrade for a number of years. They knew the technology they wanted to deploy. They knew how they were going to deploy it. They knew when it was going to start. It was something that they had planned in their capital budget. Well, what had happened was the year before that they were going to roll out this AMI project, the city experienced a major failure at the water treatment plant. Now, the water treatment plant was scheduled to be upgraded in four years. Because of the severity of the equipment failure, the wastewater treatment plant had to take priority. So they basically took the capital funds and they swapped them and they pushed the AMI project out a period of four years. Well, the water superintendent was a bit frustrated with this because he wanted to move forward and he wanted to be able to take advantage of all the things that AMI could bring to him. What he did was he took a look at meters and service. He says, you know what, with this option, I can move this from being a CapEx funded project to an OpEx funded project. He went to his board. His board approved him moving forward with this project under the metering to service platform. He was able to get the, the project installed much quicker because he had someone else doing the installation. It wasn't being done by his, his own crews. And, and today, again, he's experiencing all the advantages of AMI much ahead of where he would have if he would have had to wait that period of four years. So that was another very successful project. Let's talk about one of your biggest assets, which is your data. Accurate data is extremely important in any mass meter change out or technology upgrade. One point that I've seen come to light in many deployments is that the quality of the data in the CIS systems is often lacking. Basically, it just hasn't been well maintained. UMS comes in as part of the metering to service program and helps the utility cleanse their CIS data to ensure that you've got a proper integration with your new AMI system. Another aspect of AMI integration that utilities don't think about up front is trying to break down the data silos that exist within a water utility. Water utilities have many disparate systems like GIS, CIS, asset management, work order management, and the list goes on. Because UMS specializes in data integration, they can help break down those data silos and get these systems working synergistically. Using APIs or other integration methods, you now have systems that truly work together. Well, let's talk about post-implementation or the long-term support. All technologies from time to time have hiccups or issues. If anyone tells you that you can simply put in an AMI system and never have to worry about it or maintain it, they're not being completely honest with you. With systems such as cellular AMI, now you've removed the largest part of the burden, the fixed network portion. The network is now being maintained by the cellular carriers. That's one less thing you have to worry about. However, there are other aspects of the system that still need to be maintained. As a metering as a service provides you the post-implementation support to ensure that you're going to have optimal system performance. Because UMS has done the system installation as well as the system integration, if issues do arise with the system, they're able to assist you in quickly troubleshooting and diagnosing what the issue is, and then assisting you to put in a trouble ticket with the correct solution provider in order to get your problems resolved expeditiously. And lastly, UMS provides any needed post-implementation training or software upgrades for your system that may need to be done during the life of the system. 
Now, to tell you more about their metering as a service experience in the city of Gonzales, Louisiana, it's my pleasure to introduce the city's chief engineer, Jackie Bauman. Jackie, take it away. Thank you, Maurice. It is a pleasure to be here and speak on behalf of one of these uh, small utilities in our experience. So for those of you that do not know, the city of Gonzales is located in Louisiana between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. We have just over 11,000 residents and just over 5,000 endpoints or meters. Um, to give you a background of our system, we were a mix of meters, manually read meters, some drive-by, but majority manually uh, read. And those meters were, as you can imagine, in not the most ideal locations. So a lot of our manually read meters were in rear yards within drainage servitudes that are typically submerged here in Louisiana for long periods of time. They're behind locked gates. And of course, you have pets and animals um, to deal with. So our metering process was very labor intensive and it was not consistently accomplished um, because of all these challenges. So now that I've painted that picture of what um, the challenges are, you can imagine those challenges led to inaccurate billing. In Gonzales, a small city like ourselves, we had one full-time city employee and assistance for meter reading from a contract company. So we experienced the contract company was not composed of the most diligent workforce. They had a high turnover rate um, amongst the contract workers, and it was difficult for us to find consistent uh, contract work. This made it even harder for us to get accurate billing. We would have human errors because of the workforce issue and a slowdown in meter reading because our meters were often hidden in not the most ideal location. So new staff would not know where to find the meters. So the reading cycle was becoming slower and slower. Combine this slow reading process with older technology. We had meters that had been in the ground for decades and we had accomplished a test through the assistance of UMS to determine accuracy. Amongst commercial meters, that were tested, most meters were reading at less than 80% accuracy. So it's obvious our billing um, situation is, is less than ideal, and this led to excessive customer calls. So as you might imagine, with an inconsistent cycle, bills were sometimes reflecting six weeks of activity and sometimes two weeks of activity. The customers had no idea what to expect when the, the mail came with their water bill. So our office staff was inundated with customer complaints every month when the bills went out. Knowing that we had these challenges, the city desperately needed to do something to fix the situation. But as most of you can relate, I'm sure, we had a limited budget. So with our limited budget, we attempted to start changing these manual meter, manually read meters to drive by situ the drive-by meters. Well, with our budget, we were only able to accomplish small amounts of meters, a couple hundred a year. And at that pace, it would have taken us just a long, long amount of time to change up meters. And we didn't have millions of dollars at our disposal to go ahead and change out the entire system. So this is all the challenges and issues that has led us to this amazing metering as a service program that I'd like to tell you about. So knowing that we don't have the money and knowing we have the challenges, researching this program, the city realizes we don't have to make this large upfront purchase. We don't have to go on our own, buy hardware, acquire software, and, and assume that cost all upfront. We did a cost benefit analysis and determined that the project was definitely valuable to the city based on the lost revenues that we were losing every month from inaccurate billing and inaccurate readers, vehicle usage, employee usage, contract employees, all of those things combined, we, need, we knew this project had a value. So we entered into a 10-year agreement with UMS. And through this agreement, the city was going to pay a nominal fee per meter per month. 
And this fee not only got our meters all upgraded at one time, trained our staff, got our software integrated with billing, but we were able to offer the customers an app, an eye on water app that each person could monitor their usage at home, identify leaks immediately, and have a piece of technology so they could manage their water usage and not be surprised by their bill each month. So knowing we were gonna offer these citizens an app, the mayor and council decided to un unanimously adopt a customer fee. And that monthly customer fee actually covered 100% of the UMS monthly cost. Therefore, we were able to take this entire project cost and pass it on to the customers. Now, as most of you are thinking, customers and any increase in fee usually leads to upset customers and complaints. And ironically, or I guess happily, we should say the city staff, the mayor and the council had less than 10 calls um, complaining or asking about the fee. And once those people were told of the fee and what, it, what they would obtain, what valuable app was in their hands because of this monthly fee, we heard no further complaint. So through this, this entire project, I will tell you that um, we reduced our reader meter reading time by 71%. We've improved our accuracy. We've minimized our labor costs. We detect leaks proactively. And obviously the big one, our customer service has just greatly increased. So I wanna tell a quick story because I just, I was shocked at how well our staff embraced this program and learned from it. Our staff was able to get reports on each day, identifying high use meters or potential leaks. In the very first month of implementing this program, our utility clerk receives an alert, high water usage at a residential home. And this home is using in excess of 700 gallons an hour. So the city quickly determined that a main line feeding a swimming pool had burst while the customer was in Europe. Had we not had this leak detection report, that leak would have gone unnoticed until that customer got home. It just so happens the customer lived alongside of a bayou and all of the water was flowing right in the bayou. No one noticed a thing. So on the, just upon the first month of having this program, we are already able to see the benefits, not just lost revenue, but lost resources and, and waste of that water. So in this project, we upgraded all 5,000 endpoints with the system and passed that fee directly onto the customer with little to no complaint. And in summary, I'll tell you the lessons learned. I am very honest. I work on sewer, gas, roadways, drainage projects, just like most small towns. You just do a lot of different projects. No project is 100% perfect. A good team is gonna be critical to the project success and having every member on that team come to the table with a positive attitude and a willingness to work together is critical. I will say our staff here knew there, there were going to be challenges and the implementation in any project is hard, but knowing that we had a stellar team with Badger and UMS and our city staff, we got through all those challenges. UMS had a really strong relationship with the financial software vendor that we use. And everyone knows your billing system has to receive the data properly. It has to speak with the meters properly in order to work successfully. Thankfully, UMS has that expertise, spoke directly to Tyler Technologies with ENCODE, that happens to be our financial vendor, and, and get the right formatting, the accurate numbers, moved right from one system to the other, and our, our, our implementation was very, very, very good, a great experience. And, and I'm, not, I'm being honest, we did have our challenges, but it was, it was great. Um, having experienced UMS support through each step of the project was great. Knowing the, their staff was in the field, working on those meters, finding the locations so we would never lose them again. They were GPS and, and working with our staff, I just can't say enough good about it. Uh, one thing I'll say in closing, when we started this project, obviously none of us knew COVID-19 
challenges that, that were ahead of us. Having this in place in 2020 has been a lifesaver. Um, if we were in the old days of manual meter reading and working with contract workers, I'm not sure how we would have gotten through the social distancing challenges and, and complex staff challenges of this year. So in summary, great program. I, I can't say enough good about it. You know, selecting the right team is just important and having a great attitude is, is critical. Um, and now I'd like to turn it over to Joey Mitchell, Vice President at UMS. And Joey will share how taking a holistic approach to AMI will greatly improve deployment outcomes. Take it away, Joey. Thank you so much, Jackie. Uh, as Maurice and Jackie discussed, uh, metering upgrades are tough and deploying AMI technology is much more than putting meters in the ground. Now, historically, utilities you know, they did not look at meter replacement programs as a means of upgrading or replacing all meters at once. In fact, most utilities uh, with some type of meter replacement program would only replace about 10% of their meters each year. And a lot of utilities are, are still trying to play catch up with this approach and this constant cycle of maintenance. But today, with meter manufacturers, you know, guaranteeing meter accuracy and performance for as long as 20 years, uh, and really battery technology has evolved to the point that a, a battery-enabled AMI transmitter in a very harsh pit set environment can be warranted for 20 years. I mean, the evolution of technology in our field is nothing short of amazing. And because of this, a full-scale meter replacement program is really becoming a trend and I, I would actually argue will soon become the norm, as Maurice had mentioned. And this is really because of the enormous benefits of a properly planned and deployed AMI meter upgrade program has on streamlining the entire operations from meter reading to billing and, and to customer's service. So modernizing you know, your metering equipment and getting out of that constant maintenance cycle can now be a reality with advancements of technologies, especially when you combine them with the metering as a service delivery model. Uh, you know, as, uh, as everybody mentioned, you know, this is not easy. Advanced metering programs, I mean, they're complex. I had a general manager tell me one time, you know, metering upgrades, you know, it's just so complex, so complex that the easiest thing to do is really to do nothing. I mean, she said, if it were easy, Joey, every utility would have upgraded by now. And, you know, she was so right. And this is because it encompasses, you know, everything from replacing equipment to adding transmitters, uh, to, to these meters and collection devices sometimes throughout your service territory, configuring software, and then updating your existing processes, procedures, and really even policies um, that need to be addressed. So in reality, an AMI project is really an IT project that's, that's really kind of folded with this construction project that involves uh, equipment that has historically been purchased utilizing more traditional bid or procurement methods. So this project can be confusing, it's complex, and because of this, one of the very first things that, that we challenge our customers to think about is how, how do you intend to buy or procure a program? And you know, there's tons of different ways to do it. Metering a service is, is one of those ways. And, and when you think about how to buy, you know, you don't have to figure it out right away, but we always recommend thinking about it right away. And, and that's because this type of upgrade is so complex that you'll need to educate your procurement staff and really the entire organization on the complexities. So you're going to really need value partners throughout the entire upgrade uh, journey to help you develop a really good go-to-market strategy um, that's really based on the needs of the organization. 
uh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard uh, customers say, you know, procurement said we have to do it like this, or we've always done it this way. Um, this is really like no other project. Uh, I always recommend including these key stakeholders from the beginning, talk to other utilities, get advice um, from your state. You know, really don't let the procurement or the complexities around it, you know, impact your ability to address this project holistically or even add complexity to, to a really a, a, an already complex project. In fact, metering as a service was in part designed to accelerate the adoption of technology and really ease the procurement by allowing uh, customers and utilities to subscribe and really look at meter replacement programs dis differently and subscribe to a full scale meter replacement program, much like they would software as a service or other professional services such as trash collection. Uh, one of the, 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 the challenges uh, with, with looking at an upgrade holistic, holistically is really assessing your own organization. We, we know these are, are complex. It's going to impact your current operations, your people, and really your people's scope of work. It impacts the vendors you already purchased from, and it's important to conduct a full assessment of your organizations, their capabilities, and their limitations. I start with this because it is very tempting to begin your journey by thinking about technology. While looking at the available technology that's on the market is not a bad idea. In fact, it's, it's, it's very much welcome. The best place to begin your journey is by looking at your current operations, clearly understanding the ways you would like your operations to be streamlined or enhanced. And advanced metering really impacts many parts of your organization and each stakeholder in it differently. So our experience has shown that getting buy-in and input across all key stakeholders will ensure a more successful and impactful project. You know, we've had we've seen a ton of projects go wrong in this step when it's rushed or when one department makes a decision really in a silo and and doesn't really get the buy-in from from the remain remainder of the organization. So define your requirements to support your billing op operations the way they are today. Uh, stay focused on, on what you want to do in the future um, and your future operational enhance enhancements. But remember, you know, the upgrade doesn't happen overnight. There is a transition period. This is a project. You're going to have bumps and bruises along the way. But if you keep focused on the transition process um, by really establishing requirements around how you're going to import the new meter information into your billing system and how you're going to do that electronically. And just as important is, is engaging and partnering with your IT staff early. Um, from establishing interfaces for billing reads or developing a plan to manage and leverage the, the massive amounts of data that you're going to get later on, you're going to need their support. You're going to need them in the beginning. You're going to need them at the end. Um, you're going to need the support of your CIS vendor. So engage them early in the process. Discuss your project with them understand their capabilities, you know, and their limitations as it relates to the upgrade um, is very important. That way, when you're ready to deploy, uh, you're not going to see delays in your project. Um, and now that you've, you know, developed and executed the right procurement strategy, selected your vendor team, you know, understand your organizational improvements, I mean, you're ready to move full steam forward. So before you do that, you know, dig up all that pre-work that you did and um, use it as really your answer key, your foundation of, of, of implementing and, and testing uh, and ensuring that everything's going to work the way you want it to work. But once you have everything in place, it's really tempting to just rush, you know, rush to implementation. I really, you know, tell people all the time, you know, take the time to plan out. I'm talking real technical plans to really ready your organization and accept the upgrade. You know, most of this time, you know, if you have problems can be, can be traced back to the lack of time allocated for planning or real tactical development of execution plans. So 
don't shorten the steps. Don't shorten the steps. So no matter how great uh, the change you're about to make is, keep in mind change is hard. Uh, it's not going to be fun. It's painful. Um, there's going to be people in the organization that may not like it. Uh, when you add in the fact that it's going to take months to expedite this upgrade, you know, it, it's going to be even more painful. So whether you do a project as a traditional design, build, project, or you do a full-scale metering as a service solution, this part of the journey is painful, and I can't overstate it enough. Um, you get to hear all the benefits that Jackie just stated in, in Gonzales and, and kind of the benefits of today. But as she mentioned, you know, the time that, that it takes to kind of get everything up and running, it, it definitely um, – can be painful. And if you don't get buy-in from people who, who may or may not support the project, um, it can be even more, more painful. You know, we've been in business for, you know, many years really helping utilities uh, do full-scale metering change-outs. And we've seen the evolution increase over those years um, to more and more uh, and if you look at, you know, RFPs on the street and, and the way utilities are transitioning, more and more are saying we want to we want to start, you know, and, and, and upgrade everything. So five years ago, I had a client ask me because they hired us to deliver all the professional services for their AMI project. And they said, have we ever thought about delivering the entire metering program as a service? So instead of building and delivering all these independent complex pieces and parts, why not just build it all, help maintain it, and be a full-scale service provider? And in fact, he had told me, like, if you could offer that today, uh, we could just subscribe to it. You'd streamline the entire procurement process. You'd make it a whole lot easier for, for us than the way we're, we're, we're looking at it now. And really, it was through this conversation and this idea that created a three-year journey um, that I really didn't think, you know, we really didn't think would take three years uh, of creating a very simplified path to a meter upgrade that was really starting to grow in complexity. So look, so really looking at it from my customer's perspective gave me an appreciation for how difficult getting one of these programs off the ground really is. So if you look at the current, you know, do-it-yourself model here, I mean, it, it took years to get to the point where you, you could just get to a, putting a single meter in the ground. I mean, it felt like an accomplishment to get the project approved and funded and authorized, but then going through the procurement process took more time. And, and then that was another accomplishment in the project. And then you had to execute and you had to think about, you know, coordinating all the shipments, buying it, installing it. Uh, decommissioning your old business processes, making sure your, your CIS data was right, which Maurice had mentioned is, is always a challenge and always one of the risks of these projects. Teach your employees how to use the new system. And most of the time, utilities were doing this all by themselves. And there had to be a better way. There had to be a better way to do this. And I thank I think our customer three years ago for, for kind of putting this in our head. And that was really the better way was metering as a service. And the better way was focusing on desired outcomes of the upgrade rather than the narrowed nuances of specification. You know, today, besides the NetAmp program that we offering, you know, there are other offerings on the market that take a holistic approach to the very complex offerings. You know, so, so the upgraded approach to solving our metering challenges, you know, can be done today. And if we look back and realize why we didn't do it, you know, 10, 20, 15 years ago, we, we really understand that if, if, if we look through it at a new lens, uh, you can do it differently and it's going to solve our challenges. And if you do it that way, uh, some of the things that I would encourage, it, encourage you to think about including is ensure that all the meters and the endpoints and the software, and the installation services, and all that integration and the training, you know, are all completed. And then it, if you think about it like building a car, you know, now you have it built. Now that car still needs oil changes, new tires. So maintenance services such as testing and training and first line support, 
you know, to really troubleshoot and diagnose, you know, where different problems may arise. I mean, there might be an integration with a billing system or CIS, and a lot of times clients have have challenges because they'll call one vendor and then they'll say it's it, you got to call this other vendor, and so they, there's a ton of time wasted in trying to diagnose where where potential problems may be. Um, and then when you bring on new employees, training them and, and, and ensuring that they know how to operate the new system, that's that's definitely key. And and, it, and if you look at it holistically, there are key benefits. And, you know, whether that's, you know, such as streamlining your operations, eliminating multiple reading practices and procedures, eliminate the enormous capital expense. And, you know, if you and, and there are opportunities not to affect your financial ratings or your bond ratings with the agencies and really eliminate the implementation risk. Um, so, you know, I, I definitely thank you for, for listening to our part. And, and, and Billy, I'll, I'll hand it back over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Joey. And I'd also like to thank UMS and all of our wonderful panelists today. Um, before we open up the floor to questions, I just wanted to remind everybody, please feel free to submit some questions at any time. Um, it, uh, the question box is at the lower right hand of your screen. I also wanted to let you know that a copy of the presentation and handouts will be available following uh, the Q&A session. So let's get started with our first question. And that is from Dennis. Dennis would like to know, and I'm gonna send this out to all of you and uh, I'll let you folks let me know who'd like to answer it. Um, Dennis would like to know, do you have an option for the utility to host their own data? This is Maurice, I'll, I'll, I'll ask that question. Uh, in, in our case, uh, in most manufacturers' case today, the software platforms have moved to a cloud-based platform because uh, Features and functions are always being added to give customers the, the capabilities they desire. If the software is hosted at each individual customer, um, it has to be, you have to send out CDs to every customer. So most manufacturers have gone away from that. Okay, uh, next question is from Aaron. And uh, again, I'll send this out to everybody and whoever wants to jump in, please do. Aaron would like to know, is the meter testing for flow or just electronics? This is Joey. The meter testing in our service program is for um, flow and to make sure that the, the meter is still testing accuracy. So some meters, uh, larger meters can be recalibrated. So if, if there needs to, uh, if any of that needs to be done at the time of testing, uh, we would we would do that as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, um, our next question is actually from Leonard. Leonard would like to know, what is the largest water system you have converted over to your service? Uh, so in the beginning, that's a, that's a good question. We we really took uh, some time uh, in in perfecting, I guess, if you will, or trying to put the right level of service. So we really thought that that it would be smaller utilities in the beginning, um, you know, and, and so we we have a handful of, you know, five and 6,000 meter accounts, but the largest one right now is 90,000 services. Excellent. And we are getting a lot of great questions. Um, we actually have a question here for Jackie. Um, Jackie, Christy would like to know, what was the free amount that what excuse me? What was the fee amount that your utility added to the bills to cover the AMR program? So in our situation, that monthly fee was five dollars and twenty-five cents. Great. Okay. And then Frank has a question. Frank says, in Gonzales, what was the one? Oh well, you one-time fee to consumers. You already said that, or did you? The five dollars and twenty-five cents. That's correct. <laughs> okay. That's correct. Got ahead of myself. Okay, great. Um, here's a question from Joey to any of the panelists. Joey would like to know, is the network cell-based or traditional, H, excuse me, AMI? Yeah, uh, in this in this scenario, the, uh, the, the cellular network was uh, cellular AMI. Okay, perfect. And Ani Rood would like to know, what is the duration of the contract for metering as a service? So the 
the duration that most um, it, it appears that, that kind of a lot of our clients have settled on is this 10 year or 120 months. Um, we we have looked at longer term, 15 year, and then also some seven years. So there's a lot of flexibility um, when it comes into duration. I would also add that when you move from a CapEx to an OpEx, you have a couple different constraints. One being, you know, obviously annual appropriation and budget. So in the case of Gonzalez, uh, we mirrored the start time of the service uh, fees starting. Um, to align with their budget year. So we actually started the project, uh, you know, six or seven months prior to uh, the fiscal year starting. So there's a lot of flexibility as it relates to that as well. Excellent. Okay. We have a question here for the panel from Michael. Michael would like to know, once implementation is finished in the metering as a service model, who handles warranty changeouts? troubleshooting issues and other problems due to metering changeouts and software updates? Long question. <laughs> so I'll, I'll start that, I'll start that answer and then, you know, we can, Jackie can jump in or, or, or Maurice, but um, we, we really, when we started uh, developing metering as a service, uh, you know, for our delivery model, this was something that we, we kind of went back and forth on. So what we really do is work very closely with, the uh, with our client um, in in most scenarios, what happens is that the client the 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 customer is responsible for the day to day troubleshooting. So if there was a you know wire cut or you know the initial you know troubleshooting of of the equipment, they're going to go out there. They're going to be trained on how to do that, and they're gonna they're gonna you know obviously address those concerns. If there are things that need to be returned on on back to the manufacturer uh, via warranty replacement, then we, we have in, uh, a return material uh, process set up with all our clients um, that, that, would, um, that would initiate that return and then bring new equipment uh, on board. Um, we always, you know, the, so, so really the day-to-day -day stuff, but all our clients are, are protected, you know, in the case of like, if there's, if there were to have any mass failures or, you know, situations like that, then obviously they have a, a service provider there that's that's standing by behind uh, the different performance metrics that we that we adhere to in our client in our contract. And I'll add to what Joey said. Um, our staff, our field staff, I should say, in the utility department, was trained through this program. And like Joey mentioned, you know, tampering with the devices or clipping wires or, or damage from machinery, those items our, our field staff, is a, they're able to identify and fix on their own. But a part of this contract and this program in this long-term relationship is the implementation of a work order type system where warranty needs or technology issues or anything that we may need from UMS is inserted by our staff into the work order system. Even our annual accuracy check, you know, we, we will submit that through the system and it will get tracked through the UMS program to get to the and routed to the right person. So just like a warranty issue would go through that same system with UMS. Perfect. And um, while you're here, Jackie, I do have another question for you. Let's see here. Your question is, Jackie, do you use fixed drive-by or cellular? And that's from Stephen. Well, we've had it all. Um, so, so we have had um, a hodgepodge of meters through the years. Um, I've been with the city 10 years and um, the, the Badger meter that was drive-by, which was a, a, a large portion of our system when we started the metering as a service program, that Badger meter uh, was able to be retrofitted in order to transmit data into the new program. So um, we did have manual meters that had to be completely replaced, but a large section of our city that was drive-by was, was retrofitted. 
Okay, perfect. And we have a two part question here from Eric. Eric asks, first part is what happens at the end of the 10 year, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, MAAS agreement period between the utility and UMS? And second part is who owns all of the meter radio equipment during that first 10 years and then after that? And I can do that, I can repeat I'll that. Take that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I I think I got it, but I may need you to repeat it. Um, so the so very good questions. Uh, the first uh, the first question is um, the what happens at the end of the ten years. So in our contract, we we essentially break break up. Let's just say in Jackie's scenario, her five twenty five. There is a um, there is a fee that addresses um, the implementation phase and then there's a managed services fee that includes all of the uh, you know software services and then maintenance services so in the case of jackie let's just say for example the implementation fee was four dollars and the other fee was a dollar 25 um, the at the end of 10 years if we wanted to renew the service agreement but let's just say she did not uh, the city of Gonzales didn't see the need to upgrade equipment. They could continue on our service platform for um, the dollar twenty-five instead of the five twenty-five. So that's that's the benefit. Um, the idea really behind the contract is to really get you again out of the constant uh, uh, maintenance cycle and get you to the point where where you can experience the next upgrade holistically. Uh, you know, at that time. So if there's new things on the market that you want, the, the, the desire for us would be well, maybe there's, there's an opportunity to upgrade, you get some new equipment, you get some new features, benefits, and potentially your entire, you know, service contract stays the same, maybe slightly different, probably. Um, the second thing is who owns the equipment, the, the equipment. That's a common question that we get. Um, the the in every state for this type of and, and of services is, is kind of different in most states um it, you it would be it would fall under like a traditional finance um you know statutes if you will if we were to sign an agreement that says hey after 10 years you own everything um there is things that we can do to sort of address ownership but from a, just a pure you know direct answer we would we being ums would um would own that equipment if at the end of 10 years we wanted to um uh just leave that equipment in place that would be our choice um but but hopefully that addresses the ownership excellent thank you so much we have time for a few more questions we've gotten a lot of questions so um if we don't have time to to get to yours live we will certainly be able to answer them after as well so um, our next question is from Jeffrey. Jeffrey asks, how was the process of establishing the proper leak alerts for residential and larger user customers determined not to get too many false alarms? I, I can take that. Uh, great question. On your meters that you have a normal constant usage, so let's say your larger meters that are continuous users, you would flag those in our system, and I'm sure, sure most systems are the same, you'd flag those as normally continuous uses. Those would not come up on your normal leak alert report. When it comes to your leak alerts, then you're able to sort of dial that in to create the right thresholds of the amount of leak and the duration of that leak. Because sometimes utilities don't elect to uh, take on a leak or report a leak to a customer the day it happens. They want it to go on for maybe two or three days to make sure it wasn't something intermittent. So you have the ability to sort of dial that in and hone that in. And then on the consumer side, the consumer also has the ability on the, uh, ours is called Ion Water, the Ion Water Consumer app, to be able to dial that in themselves. So they want to look for a very small leak or a very large leak. Great, thank you. Okay, and a uh, couple more questions for you. Uh, Lewis would like to know, have you found offering limitations in different states? Well, not yet. Uh, we we sort of tackled the first, the two toughest state, states uh, first. So, um, so not yet. And, 
and uh, you know, I, I, while this is new, um, I believe that there's there's a ton of there's it's new for metering. There's a ton of examples in other industries where delivery models like this are working and working very very efficiently. Um, I mentioned trash service earlier, um, but uh, and so that's that's kind of an easy one to look at. So instead of buying trash trucks or hiring people or you know um, providing waste bins, you know you're outsourcing that to a service provider to help you for a number of years. Um, you know in the water space, you know there's water treatment facilities that have kind of went to this model and 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 other examples. So um, have not had a limitation yet yet, but we believe that the the experience that we have uh, in in some of the tougher states will will help us. Okay, great. We'll try for one more here. Uh, Jeremy would like to know: Was the five dollars and twenty five cents per meter fee a one time fee or a monthly fee? If one time, is there a separate fee for ongoing SAAS slash MAS support? And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> So the answer is that is a monthly fee that that is in in our um, council I will say adopted that without end. So that is a fee that is monthly flat um, without an end to it. So it's an ongoing fee with no end termination date. Okay, perfect. And last one from Marceline. Marceline would like to know: Did you conduct a propagation study prior to the installation of the AMI network? I'll, I'll take that question. Uh, in the case of a site, in the case of a traditional AMI network, you would have to run that propagation study. It's a little bit different in a cellular network. You'd run a cellular coverage analysis to make sure you have cellular coverage there, but it's very similar, and we would always run those tests prior to deploying our technology. Okay, excellent. That is all we have time for today. want to say thank you again to our panel for your expertise on leveraging metering as a service to expedite advanced metering deployments and removing capital costs. Before we go, I want to thank you for joining the webinar today, and don't forget to participate in the survey immediately following the webinar, and handouts will be sent over to you. Thanks again, everybody.